So we are continuing our reading of Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Leela, Chapter 1. We are on text 50. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Yatha Brahmane Bhagavan Swayam Upadishyanu Bhavitavan. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Swayam Bhagavan, taught Brahma and made him self realized. So, again, here is being said that how uh, knowledge was first brought into this, into this material world. It is Krishna himself gave this knowledge to Brahma. The English maxim that God helps those who help themselves is also applicable in the transcendental realm. There are many instances in the revealed scriptures of the personality of Godheads acting as the spiritual master from within. The personality of Godhead was the spiritual master who instructed Brahma, the original living being, in the cosmic creation. When Brahma was first created, he could not apply his creative energy to arrange the cosmic situation. So when Brahmaji was, when he was born from the navel of Garbhodakshay Vishnu, he was sitting on the lotus flower and everything was dark. It was very dark. This material world is actually full of darkness. If the sun and the moon were not there, we wouldn't be able to see anything. And where does the sun and moon get the light from? It gets the light from, the, from Krishna, from, uh, from the Brahma Jyoti, from the light which is coming from Krishna. So it was really very, very dark. And Brahma didn't know, why am I created? What am I supposed to do? I'm here, but what do I do? And so he heard Tappa. He heard the voice, Tappa. Okay, let's hear. That's what that. At first, there was only sound vibrating the word Tappa which indicates the acceptance of hardships for spiritual realization. Refraining from sensual enjoyment, one should voluntarily accept all sorts of difficulties for spiritual realization. This is called tapasya. So Brahma also, when he heard tapa, he sat down in meditation for a long, long, long time. And then because he got so purified, he, could, he was able to hear the words of Krishna from within his heart, because Krishna is Paramatma in everyone's heart. And from within the heart, Krishna gave him the knowledge of all the Vedas. Tene Brahmarhida ya Adi Kabaye. That Lord Krishna spoke, he's the original spoker, speaker of the Vedas. He gave this Vedas in the heart of Brahma. Now we might say, oh, Krishna speaking to me also. And then we might make up all sorts of nonsense. But Whatever he speaks to us, if he does, because of, we are not very, our stage, we are very covered. We have a lot of contamination. So we are not able to hear him actually what he's saying. And even if we think that he's telling us something, it should be confirmed, confirmed by an authority, by a guru. So, and then what is human life meant for? Tapasya, hardship, acceptance of hardship. For what? not to increase our material desires, but for spiritual realization. Refraining from sensual enjoyment, we should control our senses, voluntarily accept some sort of difficulty, and that is tapasya. Why? Otherwise the senses are going to make us, uh, you know, we have already done that in animal life. You see, animal life, they don't have, they can eat whenever they want, they can mate whenever they want, they sleep wherever, but for human beings, all these are supposed to be done with regulation, just so that our uh, whole uh, mood or existence is not to be so focused into the eating, sleeping, mating, defending. That will happen because we are in the body. It will happen. But the focus is supposed to be for self-realization. An enjoyer of the senses can never realize God. 
godliness or the science of theistic knowledge. Thus, when Brahma initiated by Sri Krishna, by the sound vibration tapa, engaged himself in acts of austerity, by the pleasure of Vishnu, he was able to visualize the transcendental world, Sri Vaikuntha, through transcendental realization. So when uh, uh, Brahma, we heard in Bhagavatam, when Brahma uh, did the austerity, then Krishna was pleased to him. He gave him the knowledge of the Vedas and Brahma could actually see the spiritual world. That's how he spoke the Brahma Samhita. That how the spiritual world, the Vaikuntha worlds, it's all bright, everything over there, the floor is made of touchstone. There is a desire wish fulfilling trees everywhere. There is Surabi cow. Govinda is there, Shamsundar Krishna, with two lotus eyes and two lotus hands, a flute. He's playing on the flute and he's surrounded by millions and millions of goddesses of fortune. So modern science can communicate using material discoveries such as radio, television, and computers. But the science invoked by the austerities of Sri Brahma, the original father of mankind, was still more subtle. In time, material scientists may also know how we can communicate with the Vaikuntha world. So Prabhupada is saying, oh, we might say, oh, how was it possible that Brahma is sitting here? How can he see the Vaikuntha? But same, we can say now we are here in different parts of the world, but we can see each other. We are not sitting in the same place. We are sitting in different places, but with the help of technology, we are able to see. So Lord Brahma inquired about the potency of the Supreme Lord and the personality of God had answered his inquiry in the following six consecutive statements. These instructions, which are reproduced from Srimad Bhagavatam 2.9, 31 to 36, were imparted by the personality of Godhead acting as the Supreme Spiritual Master. So the original verses, the Chatushloki Bhagavatam, that is being quoted here by Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. So now he's, he's saying that, what did Lord Krishna say to Brahma? Any questions or comments till now? No, then I, we can continue. Jnanam parma guyam me tad vijnana samanvitam sa rahasyam tad angam cha grahana gaditam maya. Please hear attentively what I shall speak to you for transcendental knowledge about me is not only scientific, but also full of mysteries. Transcendental knowledge of Sri Krishna is deeper than the impersonal knowledge of Brahma, for it includes knowledge of not only his form, I'm sorry, his form and personality, but also everything else related to him. So majority of the people, majority of the people, their knowledge goes up to that God is light, that everything is light. But that is a very preliminary understanding. So Bhagavatam has two main verses, two main verses. The, one of the main verses is that the transcendentalists, those who understand the supreme absolute truth, they realize the Supreme Lord has three features. That is as Brahman, uh, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. Yeah, Vadanti Tat Tatva Vidas Tatvam Yajnanam Advayam Brahmatma Iti Paramatma Iti Bhagwan Iti Shabdayate. That comes in Bhagavatam, Canto 1.2.11. So that is preliminary. Yeah, but is a feature of the Supreme Lord. And then the higher feature is Paramatma. Yeah, that is like having a, so the Brahman level is like having a graduate degree. And then the Paramatma level is like a master's. And then knowing that, oh, God has a form, a Satchidananda form. Oh, he's a person. Oh, he has so many wonderful qualities. Oh, he has so many pastimes. Oh, he has so many devotees. And to understand how everything is related to him. 
That is the highest knowledge. That's like doing a postdoc. There is nothing in existence not related to Sri Krishna. In a sense, there is nothing but Sri Krishna, and yet nothing is Sri Krishna save and accept his primeval personality. Now, what does it mean? There is nothing in existence not related to Sri Krishna because everything comes from Krishna. He's the original person. All that we see are emanations from him. In this material world, what we see is his material energy. And wherever we see the living entities who are inside the material bodies, they are his marginal energy. They are the jivas. So in a sense, there is nothing but Sri Krishna, and yet nothing is Sri Krishna, save and accept his primeval personality. Now, when we say there is nothing but Sri Krishna, it means everything belongs to Krishna. Not that, oh, Krishna doesn't exist anymore because he has expanded himself into so many different things. No, he, everything belongs to him, and he is a person who is separate from everything. That's the way we understand. Simultaneous, one and different. This knowledge constitutes a complete transcendental science and Vishnu wanted to give Brahmaji full knowledge about that science. So this is the highest knowledge because people get confused. People think, oh, God made everything. So then how can God exist anymore? He has become everything. No, he's made everything, but he still exists as a person. The mystery of this knowledge culminates in personal attachment to the Lord with the resulting effect of detachment from anything non-Krishna. Now, what does it mean detachment from anything non-Krishna? Because we get attached to the Lord, then we see everything as part of the Lord. So the more we hear about the Lord, the more we will be situated in the true, we will understand the truth, then we will See, everything belongs to Krishna. There's nothing that does not belong to him. There are nine alternative transcendental means of attaining this stage. Hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, worshipping, praying, assisting, fraternizing with the Lord, and sacrificing everything for him. So these are the nine processes of bhakti, the nine processes of devotional service. These are different parts of the same devotional service, which is full of transcendental mystery. So at our stage, uh, devotional service bhakti here begins by hearing. That's the first one. We hear, we chant. Then what happens when we hear and chant? Then we remember the Lord. Then what we can do is we can worship, we can pray, and then the others are for very much more advanced devotees, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, assisting, fraternizing, those are higher. At our stage, hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping the deity, we should do that. Okay. The Lord said to Brahma that since he was pleased by him, by his grace, the mystery was being revealed. So when Krishna is pleased, as we hear in the Damodar Leela, Krishna is pleased. He was seeing that my mother is making so much effort. She's running behind me so much. She's so tired. And yet she, because of her love for me, she wants to catch me. She wants to chastise me because she loves me so much. So he allows her to catch him. Similarly, if we want to understand Krishna, we are trying to catch him by our mind. But Krishna is supremely independent. He's, he's going to say, why should, I, why should I let you catch me? You know, If you have no love for me, I'm not going to let you catch me. But when we engage in devotional service, we follow the authorities, we follow the process, then to the degree we surrender to Krishna, to that degree he reveals himself to us by his mercy. Is that okay? So, were there any questions on this? If not, then we can stop here. Uh, Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki, Jai Shla Prabhupada ki, Jai Gaurapri Mandir. Hari Hari Bho.